right, I don't think my soul is ready, but here we go. 1971 50 watt uh, Marshall Super Lead. This is a narrow chassis model, and uh, it's cranked. We're going to hear it. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> what can you say about that? That is nuts. That's cranked up all the way. Hopefully I didn't blow up my microphone and the cameras and hopefully everything in this room still works after that thing doing what it just did. That's just insane. Um, welcome back. This is Eric here with the Guitar Arsenal, uh, by the way. And you know, we've been having a look at some effects uh, you know, we've, we've shown off some various guitar techniques, hopefully in a somewhat educational way, maybe. And uh, we've shown off a few guitars and things like that. We thought we'd show off an amp. Um, this is on loan. This is not mine. This belongs to a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just it's a 71 Super Lead, 50 watt, um, nice vintage amp. It's been used to heck and back, uh, but she sounds wonderful. And uh, the Marshall sound really is the Fender sound in a way, just sort of taken up a notch. Uh, you know, back in the day, they took Fender basements and uh, really hot-rodded them. It was, you know, sometimes hard to get uh, Fender amps over in the UK and over in various parts of the you know, world, over in England or whatever. So Marshall started making basically hand-wired, more or less Marshall clones with some, you know, changes that, you know, were developed from input from various players. Uh, and we have what we know today is just being the king of the hill. I mean, the Marshalls are awesome. Uh, they're excellent amplifiers. They're loud. That's 50 watts, and I know you can't tell, but it's shaking this entire building. That's a lot of volume. I mean, when you just hear the sheer power that this thing has... Making noise. I'm gonna put it on standby because it's it's up all the way and it's loud. But um, Marshalls are kind of just one of those amps that it's like the sound of rock and roll. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. So we're gonna get outside of the the silly territory. Which what other place would you really want to be? But 
let's dial back a little bit. Let's get back into non-gonzo where we can actually hear ourselves territory a little bit. We're going to put the amp on about three. We've got the treble about 50%. Uh, the middle is between two and four. And uh, the bass is on four and the presence is a little high. We'll back it off to about seven. All right, now this is amplifier at a slightly lower volume. We're going to add Electro Harmonix Holy Grail Reverb just to get a splash of reverb. Okay. I'm going to check my tuning real quick here, guys. I think all that whammy and might have uh, brought her out of tune. By the way, this is a James Trussart Steelcaster. Um, very, very high quality uh, Strat clone. And uh, James Trussart makes a lot of these just crazy pieces of art that he calls guitars. Uh, but they're really more art uh, than they are anything else. And they're, they're beautiful. This one has kind of a distressed appearance to it. It's had a humbucker added to the bridge, which is kind of why I chose this guitar. Because I don't really do many guitars with humbuckers in them. Uh, I'm more of a, of a Strat and Telly kind of guy. But when you're playing Marshall, you got to have a humbucker. All right? You know, you got to have that meaty output to really drive the front end of that amp and give it uh, what it really needs to, uh, to be a Marshall. All right, that should be good enough. I'm going to add a little bit of compression. And I am going to dial the volume back just a bit. Let's just... I want to hear the sound of the amplifier. Not bad. Let's let's take the lower volume of this Marshall and just add some stomp boxes that I've got on the pedal board here and just sort of see what we wind up with. Let's leave the compression off. We'll dial in just a splash of delay from a DM2, a boss a DM2 delay, a vintage boss. And let's add the Nobles Overdrive, which is one of my favorites. And uh, let's just see if we can dial in some of that kind of crunch from the boxes and then dial out a little bit of that with the volume control excuse me, on the guitar and just see where we're, where we're sitting here. Not bad. Not bad. Let's try that bridge again. Not bad. Not terrible. Let's uh, dial out a little bit of that volume. See if we can just sort of even it out a bit here and get back to the neck pickup. 
Not bad, despite my sloppy playing. Um, these amps are wonderful. Uh, this particular one, like I said, it is on loan for a while, so we might demo some pedals through it or play around with it a little bit or demo some different guitars through it just to see what it's all about. Um, but it's one of those things, I just wanted to show uh, what a 71 Super Lead sounds like cranked in those intro sections. Hopefully they didn't sound too horrible on my part. Uh, but man, th these things are nuts. They're loud, they're as loud as you want to go. Um, really too much volume. You know, what, what tends to be, oh, there's never too much volume, but what tends to be the, the kind of case in today's world when it comes to amplifiers, I believe, is that most people are going to the small wattage combos, you know, a uh, five to 15 watt uh, combo amplifier that's light, easy to tote around to a gig. You can crank it and really get that, that saturation of the tubes that you're wanting, uh, that you, can't get out of this amplifier at a reasonable volume. If you go just about any club and crank a 50 water, you're probably gonna get told to leave or turn it off or whatever. There's not many places where you can just take this amp and really crank it, unless you're playing a big auditorium or playing a large venue outdoors or something or a big park or a festival or something. Um, and that's really where these amplifiers shined back in the day is you know all the rock musicians cranking the mess out of these things and just going nuts and getting that natural overdrive that you just get out of the amplifier. I mean, they're just wonderful if that's the kind of sound you're looking for. But I just thought we would showcase this. It's a nice vintage piece. Um, it's coming along really nice for, you know, such an older amplifier. It's still holding up good. Uh, takes pedals well on the front of the amp, just like the basement would, which uh, th there are things about this amplifier that are very basement-like. Um, we didn't even try, you know, jumping the, uh, the inputs or anything like that, but uh, you can really get some crazy sounds out of these things. I'm going to put it back on standby. Let's go over to the number two input position. I don't know if these are different gain levels or what, but we're going to find out. I'm definitely getting less output from the amp, so I'm assuming the two is a lower gain input. Uh, we're just going to tweak this up just a hair. We don't want to blow ourselves out of the water here. Well, maybe we do. Not bad. Definitely less uh, output. What we'll do, let me make sure I'm in tune. I am kind of whammy in this guitar pretty crazy and I don't wanna, the last thing you wanna do on one of these amps is have it really, really loud and hit a, a chord out of tune and uh, it's just gonna sound like literal poop coming out of the amp and you don't want that. <laughs>
can't help not do that kind of stuff when you play an amp like this. I bet the guitar's not in tune anymore. I don't know. No, not even close. I, I do things with a Strat I probably shouldn't. I, I'm asking the guitar to do probably more than uh, any reasonable human being would really do. Why can't you just make the guitar sound pretty? Why do you have to make it sound evil? Well, it doesn't matter. All right. Not bad. Um, I'm getting in kind of crazy gonzo mode with you know some of the just silliness there, but this amp sort of like begs you to do that. So if it's something, if you've ever been like looking at these types of amps and wondered, you know, kind of how they sound cranked, I mean, hopefully this is somewhat a decent sounding representation of what they can sound like when they're really driven. Um, it's a lot of volume. Um, it's, it's not the kind of volume everybody needs. I don't need it for sure, but it does sound pretty cool and the responsiveness that you get out of the guitar going into the front end of the amp um, when you've got that crazy saturation going on can just really give you just, just stupid crazy sounding stuff you know you get these weird anomalies and crazy feedback and those are only things you're going to achieve out of an amp that is driven to the point of nuclear meltdown so that's definitely the territory that we're in here on this Marshall. So, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. We're just kind of monkeying around, having a little bit of fun. Uh, thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time. We post every Monday and Friday. Uh, be sure to tune back in. We appreciate the support. See you later.